With me now, the co-founder of SCOTUS blog, Amy Howe, and NYU law professor Melissa Murray. She previously served as law clerk to then-judge Sonia Sotomayor. Um, ladies, thank you so much for, for joining us. Amy, I want to start with you. The 5-4 split has, has been the standard now for, for many, many years. Without Justice Ginsburg on the bench, without somebody replacing her who is ideologically aligned with her, what is at stake? So you, you summarized it quite well. You know, the justices like to tell you how many of their cases are nine to nothing or eight to one. But the, the issues that people really care about are frequently five to four. And the court has been moving to the right. But to the extent that they've had sort of more liberal results in on issues like abortion or affirmative action or same sex marriage, what's happened has been that the, four, the court's four more liberal justices, including Ruth Bader Ginsburg, have been joined by Justice Anthony Kennedy or more recently Chief Justice John Roberts. And so if, the, if Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg is replaced by the president with a, a much more conservative justice, you know, whether or not the chief justice wants to join the court's more liberal justices won't really so much matter because there's only three of them. There'd be a, a solid five-member conservative majority even before you uh, get to the Chief Justice John Roberts. Uh, what cases are coming down uh, the pike, Melissa, uh, that could be decided differently had Justice Ginsburg not passed on Friday? Well, we have a huge challenge to the Affordable Care Act, which will be coming before the court just a week after the election. Um, that was a case where in 2012, you really needed Chief Justice Roberts siding with the liberals and you needed a full complement of four liberals in order to have the ACA survive. That, of course, is in doubt now. There are also challenges to religious liberties and the scope of anti-discrimination laws, follow-on challenges from the Masterpiece Cake Shop case that was heard only a few terms ago. And those will have really broad implications, not only for LGBTQIA rights, but also for the rights of reprodu for reproductive rights in this country as well. So there are a number of really big cases. And that's even before we get to the possibility that there will be some sort of existential election crisis that will go to the Supreme Court, whether it's an eight-member court or a nine-member court with a new Trump-appointed justice. Um, Amy, really fast, uh, Roe v. Wade is something that everyone brings up when it comes to the makeup of the court. What cases are, are down the line right now that could come to the Supreme Court that might potentially overturn that decision? Yeah, so last term the Supreme Court did hear a case and they struck down a Louisiana law that required doctors who perform abortions to have the right to, ad to, right to admit pa patients at nearby hospitals. And that case did not directly implicate Roe versus Wade, but there are other laws. Remember a couple of years ago, about a year, year and a half ago, there were you know, states passing different laws involving sort of early abortions, uh, cases involving ultrasounds that could come to the Supreme Court and be a much more direct challenge to Roe versus Wade than the Louisiana case that the court heard last year. Melissa, is it a foregone conclusion that if Donald Trump uh, uh, is able to place another conservative on the court, uh, that the court will remain heavily conservative and the decisions will, will all be predictable along conservative ideology? Well, I mean, there's always the possibility of a David Souter who surprises you, but I think that's increasingly unlikely. Um, the vetting process is much more intense than it was when Justice Souter was appointed to the court, and it's more intense because of Justice Souter. They don't want any surprises. The president has been very clear. He wants to appoint a pro-life justice. He's been very clear that he's going to appoint a woman justice. And that means if he is successful in doing all of that, this will be a justice who, like Justice Ginsburg, was a woman, but without the same commitments to equality or autonomy that Justice Ginsburg espoused. Melissa Murray and Amy Howe, ladies, thank you very much for uh, putting the weight of this into context for us. We appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.